Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make a set of posts for a bed that looked like they were turned. That is, they look like they were made on a lathe. I don't have a tiny lathe, so I'm going to have to carve them. I probably think wood carving, I can't do that. At least that's what I used to think, but this is really very easy if you take your time. Of course, the methods I'm showing you on this video can be used to make almost anything that was made on a lathe, but in miniature, like posts or balusters or table legs or so on. As always, I'm starting with a drawing. Having a drawing life-size is very useful in almost every case, but here it's going to help us size and lay out our post. I've selected a post that best matches the diameter of the one I've drawn. I just need to trim it to size. I'm using a Dozuki saw to trim the dowel. I got one from Amazon and it is a dream to use. It's very nice. So now I'm using my drawing to mark out the transition points on the post. This will guide my carving later on. Your marks don't have to be precise, just close. You can make a pretty even mark all the way around the dowel by holding the pencil still and rotating the dowel. It won't be perfect, but it's good enough for what we need. I'll start the carving by cutting into spots where I want to remove material. These cuts serve as a relief for the little chips so they don't stick to the dowel. Roll the dowel while pressing down on the knife. You don't have to press very hard. We can make this cut deeper later on if we have to. Now I'll just start removing material. I'm just cutting little chips one at a time, not trying to carve out a huge chunk at once. The smaller cuts are much easier to control and take less effort to make. Keep the dowel rotating in your hand while you are doing this and this will help keep things even. At this stage, your cuts really don't have to be very precise or tidy. All you want to do at this stage is to remove the bulk of the material, and we will be refining the shape later on. So don't worry about those little facets that are being left behind by the knife. Now that we have enough wood cut away, I'm using an emery board to smooth out the cuts and to shape the dowel. Keep the dowel rotating again as you file. If you have really fine details to put into the post you are making, you might want to skip right to the filing step. But using the knife first usually speeds things along. I'm varying the angle that I'm holding the emery board at to make transitions between the parts of the post smooth. Now that looks like a good start. There are still some imperfections and scratches, but we're going to take care of those in the last step. So let's move on to the ball at the top of the post. I'll start with a relief cut again. A little deeper than the last one because I'm going to have to remove a lot of material. But let's just start chipping away at it, get some of this wood out of here. And when you do this, again, just take small bites out of the wood. The knife is much easier to control when you're making smaller cuts, which means it is less likely to slip and cut yourself or some part of the post you don't want to cut. Also, when it comes to wood, you can always go back and cut a little more off. However, adding wood back is a much bigger task, if it's even possible at all in this situation. I'm adding an extra line to help me see where the middle of the ball is. You can add as many reference lines as you like to the dowel. What you are trying to do is have a clear picture in your head how the dowel is supposed to look when it's done. And imagine that over your unfinished dowel. Then it's just a matter of removing everything that doesn't fit into that image. I'm removing more wood from the base of the ball, getting that point a little deeper. I'm using a surgical scalpel to carve here. You can use whatever knife you like, just make sure it's sharp. This may seem a little counterintuitive, but it's safer to use a sharp knife when carving because you have to use less force to push it through the wood, which means that when you slip, and you will slip eventually, you won't jerk as much and will be less likely to hit something important like your finger or a part of the dowel that you don't want to cut. A good method of work here is to have a look at your dowel, decide where you want to remove some material, and then cut the wood away while rotating the dowel, trying to keep each cut as similar as possible to the last one. Then when you have gone all the way around, have another look at your dowel and continue. This will help keep your dowel even as you continue to carve it all the way around. I've removed quite a bit of material here, so let's take the emery board and smooth things out and just see how far we got. It is starting to look like a ball, but not quite what I want. I also have a lot of material to remove from the neck of the ball part, so let's get started with that. I'm making a very light cut with the knife around where the shoulder of the neck will be. This is just a registration point. It'll help me keep that transition crisp and even all the way around the dowel. 
So I'm taking some pretty big chips off here, and you can see the trouble I'm having. Not only am I having a hard time controlling the knife, I'm also having to push so hard that when I finish the cut, the knife is skipping ahead and cutting into my ball. So let's go back to making little cuts, which are much easier to control. If while you are cutting with the knife, the chips are not coming away easily, you probably have to deepen your relief cut. So just do that the same way as you did before, and the chip should pop off just like before. There are a number of ways you can hold the wood and the knife, and really you just have to find one most comfortable for you. Some things to remember, however, is that keeping the knife moving away from yourself and anything vital is safest, although this is not always possible, especially when you're working in such small sizes as miniatures. Also, the closer you can put the place where you are applying force to where the knife is actually cutting, the better. So here I'm using my thumb to put force on the blade directly behind where it's cutting. That means I have to use the minimum amount of force necessary to get the knife to go through the wood. So when it skips again, I am using less force and the knife won't go as far and I'm less likely to hurt myself or damage something. So I get the neck close to where I want it. Let's go back to the ball and refine that some more. I'm just continuing to remove material that doesn't look like the ball that I'm imagining in my mind. Let's get the emery board out now and smooth out what we got so far. Whenever I am shaping a round part like this, I find it helps to have somewhat of a loose grip on the file so that I can constantly keep its angle changing to make a nice round surface. Filing the neck here, I'm not just moving up and down, I'm actually moving in a circular fashion so that I can get the curved section of the neck to smooth out evenly. If I just go back and forth, I'm going to be sanding lines into the neck so the circular motion helps keep things nice and smooth. That's closer, but not quite what I want. You can go back and cut and file as many times as you want here. I'm trying just to edge up to the final shape that I'm imagining, because if I cut too deep or cut off too much, I will have to try to glue a piece of wood back on, and then I'll have to shave it down. That is a huge pain in the neck and is going to take a lot of time. So it's best just to take it easy and go slowly, and it will end up saving you a lot of effort in the end. So let's go back to the file, see how that works. That's not too bad, that's just about what I want. So we can move on to the final step, which is to go over the whole thing with some 320 sandpaper. When you cut with the knife, you'll leave facets all over where you have cut. So we use the emery board to clean that up and make the piece smooth. The emery board, however, will leave some flat spots and a lot of ugly scratches. So we'll use the sandpaper to smooth all of that out. I am curving the sandpaper and varying the angle I'm holding it at to get a nice smooth curve in the ball. You can also twirl the dowel against the sandpaper. This helps speed up the sanding. Take your time with this step and try to get every scratch and flat spot out of the piece until you're happy with what you got. The sandpaper I'm using is 320 grit meant for an orbital sander. I like to use this particular sandpaper because the backer makes it a little bit stiff and I can shape it to match the piece that I'm sanding. Also, don't forget to sand the rest of the dowel, even the part you didn't carve. Often, dowels are shaped under a little bit of pressure. They go through a machine and they are carved into that shape, but they're also squeezed a little bit. And this can lead to what is known as burnished wood. This is when some of the cells of the wood itself are crushed and they won't accept the finish as easily as normal wood. So sand the dowel to open up these cells and make finishing that much easier. There we go, a nice post for my miniature bed. Now this example is very simple, but you can get as complex as you like. Just remember to take your time, use little cuts, and you will have something you are really proud of. And the final, final step is to repeat everything I just did four more times. This is actually easier than it sounds, because once you do it once, you'll remember how you've done it before, and the next time you'll actually end up being a little bit better, and a little bit better on the next one after that, and by the time you're done the, your fourth post, you can imagine that the fifth post you make will be absolutely wonderful, but you already have four, so you're not going to, <laughs> unfortunately. So I hope you found that useful and enjoyable, and I want to say thanks for watching, and please subscribe.